Hello everybody, this is going to be another question and answer video where I will be going over how I made this dagger and at the same time I'll be answering your questions. So I bought this uh, billet of steel from uh, Nichols Damascus. It was around January. At that time he had uh, his inventory was on sale, 10% off and I chose this uh, boomerang pattern and I believe after 10% off and shipping everything came out to be $325. When you pay this much for a piece of steel you gotta be really careful not to mess up. When I ordered the billet it came in at 16 and a quarter inches long my sketch was about 15 and a half or something like that so I just extended the, the blade portion longer and used up the whole piece of steel that I had. I don't know what two composites or two pieces of steel were used to make the Damascus pattern but I'm sure it, one of them is 15 and 20 and the other one has got to be high carbon steel uh, because this is a high carbon um, boomerang Damascus billet. There was a question if uh, this boomerang pattern was specifically made for this dagger and no. Basically you go on Nichols Damascus website and you choose what pattern you want and if you want carbon steel, you want stainless steel, it's, it's your choice. As you saw in a video I used a metal uh, stencil or um, tracing template uh, because it made it easier to trace because of the hard edges and both sides of the dagger were the same exact identical uh, dimensions and size as the opposite side so I saw this uh, tip on Caleb white knives and I thought it was pretty cool so I used it it worked well and I, I think I'm gonna make a fillet knife using just this I mean, maybe I'll eliminate this part right here and move everything over make the handle a little bit shorter maybe thicker and I, I think it's gonna turn out to be a nice fillet knife never made a fillet knife but who knows this is not my design of the knife I saw the knife from a video game it's called standoff and I didn't want to leave it bare bones kind of like skeleton knife as it is in a game but I wanted to throw in a little uh, twist of my own spice it up a little bit with my handles and I think it came out pretty cool I always get uh, comments saying that I didn't forge the knife uh, this is not a real knife you just cut it to pieces and you're you're not a real knife maker well there was a comment that said knife making cut from sheet <laughs> really to you sir uh, or girl whoever you are this billet was forged and after it was forged I continued working on it so technically this this knife was forged same as any knife I used uh, Milwaukee bandsaw little bit of file work, um, diamond wheels from Harbor Freight and brought it to shape. All four bevels of this dagger were free ground. I used a filing jig to uh, fine tune the bevels right here in these areas and after that I sent it out for heat treating. Uh, now I get a lot of questions why why didn't I heat treat it myself? I tried to heat treat it but because the forge is not long enough I couldn't heat up both edges uh, at the same time only the the middle part was hot not the outsides and by the time I dipped it in oil it, it just didn't work out and I shipped it out to uh, Byington Blades and they heat treated it and two weeks after I received it back from them. Total cost for heat treating at Byington Blades was around $128 after it came back from Byington Blades, I free ground it again to a uh, what's called zero edge grind and basically become sharp. And after that, I hand sanded it 200 grit and started working on the handles. I chose white G10 fiberglass handles from uh, USA Knife Maker. And why I chose them is because I thought white would be great contrast to the black Damascus steel. After I shaped the handles, on the inside of the handles I drilled into it, so what that does is provide more bonding area for glue to grab onto the handle itself. 
the reason I used uh, black glue on one side and a clear on the other side is because I want to distinguish the handles so I don't mix them up. Vaseline was applied to the face of it and the inside so later on I could pop the handles out and work on them. And at, at first I thought they weren't, wouldn't come out but eventually they did and I was so happy. Because <laughs> it was a little bit nerve-wracking. Nerve I thought they wouldn't come out at first. While the handle was in one piece, I was grinding the glue off of it to make everything uh, flat and one of the handles slipped off. I don't think I have it on video, but guess why it landed right on the tip of the handle and it chipped it about an eighth of an inch. So I had to re-grind everything on both sides, redo the bevels and you know how the story goes. I almost did not cut the handles right here to make the spacing because I like the way the whole handle looked solid piece it was uh, it was nice but because in the beginning of the video I showed you a sketch how it, the handles are gonna look like so I proceeded to cut them but before I did that I made a sheath for it and I used the uh, hole stacks for the sheath it's not kydex, it's whole sticks, a little bit more fancy, softer material. And I use a tech lock belt clip on the back. And let me see. There you go. Now I'll explain later why I made a whole stick sheath instead of leather. Now going back to the handles, I had some questions uh, where people asked me if it was uncomfortable to hold it and I am holding as hard as I can and nothing's digging into my hand. Uh, all the edges right here, they're all sanded so nothing, n no sharp edges that I feel. It feels pretty good. If I was going to redo this handle, I would make the spacing a little bit less. I mean, uh, less in width. Uh, I think it would look better because uh, I still kind of like when it, the handle was one solid piece. But I, it looks cool this way too. Really cool. Once I was done with the handles, um, I hand sanded it to 600 grid. The, the blade and I etched it in ferric chloride and uh, vinegar 50-50 mix so 50% ferric chloride 50% uh, vinegar this is the recipe from Nichols Damascus for his steel so that's what I used and that, that's the result that I got after that I blew it off with air uh, from the compressor and sprayed it with WD-40 uh, let it sit for 24 or 48 hours I forgot and then after that I cleaned it with uh, Windex and proceeded to glue the handles I used 15 minute epoxy to glue each set and what that did usually the regular glue takes about 45 minutes to uh, set up and I didn't want to wait 45 minutes to catch all the glue squeeze out. So 15 minute epoxy worked great. It gave me plenty of time to clean up on both sides and I didn't have to wait 45 minutes to proceed to the next handle. The whole process took me about an hour or so. And I left it, all the clamps on overnight and the next day it was perfect. Uh, Re-hand sanded the top because all the clamps made the handle dirty or little scratches and buffed it up and I was done with it. When it comes to sharpening it didn't take much because the edge was like I said ground to a zero edge and a couple of passes on the stone and it, it was ready it was sharp. Now the owner didn't want it sharp because I'll explain. So who's the owner? It's my brother-in-law. He he was flying out to Ukraine on July 8th, and this project was rushed. 
uh, he was like, I want, I'm buying it. I need it done before 8th. It's flying with me. And that I wanted to do more shaping on the handle. I wanted to grind like this. So there would be more different angles to the handle. But because he rushed me, I left them as is. Now, I started asking him questions. How are you going to transport this? Uh, I, this is a big no-no. This is not. This is an illegal knife in Ukraine or Russia, or probably many other countries. How, how are you gonna bring it in? And he started looking into it, and I had my wife look into it, the laws and everything of the Ukraine. And it turns out that you cannot transport this knife into the uh, country. What you have to do is you gotta. Once you're there, I have to ship them. Or no, I have to send them pictures of the knife, the length, the thickness, everything, who, by whom it was made, and he's going to go to the local police department and provide all that information. And basically, he's going to get permission to have this knife enter the country as a um, custom knife or a collector's item. And once he gets all the paperwork done, this knife is gonna go to him so that's who the the owner is so now now you understand why this knife or dagger has a whole sticks uh, sheath instead of leather because I ran out of time and after I made this he's like no this is fine I'm, I'm gonna stick with this it looks like leather uh, if you can see it but anyway this is why this dagger has a Holstex sheath versus leather. So what is the price to make this knife? The steel itself cost me after 10% off shipping everything it cost me $325 for the billet. Heat treatment with shipping cost me $128. G10 white handles cost me $17. Holstex was $7. Eyelets $2. Tech lock belt was $10, so the whole thing comes out to be $489 in materials. Also, on top of that, you have to add sandpaper, electricity, um, video recording, uh, video editing, taking pictures, editing pictures, putting everything together. So, I don't know what the price for that one is. There was a question, I bet over quarantine you made a lot of knives. Nope. I made this one and a stiletto that that's it these are the two that I made I've been working a lot at my day job so didn't have much time to finish any other knives also thank you to all of you that translate your comments or questions from your language to English so I don't have to do that and to all the comments that are written in English I do reply all the comments that are in a different language I don't even bother I don't have time to sit and translate I'm sorry but it's a reality that we live in um, I'm limited on time and also those of you that uh, answer questions for the others uh, so I don't have to do it thank you you guys are saving me a lot of time appreciate that there was a question uh, is uh, Telly your nickname or real name my name is Slavic, uh, but my, Telly is not my last name. My last name is consists of ten letters, and uh, where the Telly came from? When I was in Sacramento Sheriff's Academy, there was a, a training officer, Deputy Hind, and she couldn't pronounce my last name, so she goes, "I'm just gonna call you Telly." And she goes, "Is that okay?" I said, "Yeah, that's fine." And Telly stuck with me. Everybody called me Telly. And here you go, Slavic Telly. All right, uh, I think that's it. Take care, everybody. Uh, stay healthy, stay strong, and I'll see you with a next or a different video, hopefully soon. All right, take care, guys. Bye-bye.